This is Digital Futures and today we're going to be talking about smartphones. They're quickly becoming the key device at the center of our lives and we want to look at the trends defining this market. You know the growth in smartphone numbers is really something to talk about. And then you have the two key players, Apple and Samsung. Now when it comes to operating systems, iOS and Android make up 92% of the market. And then you have Windows Phone and Blackberry struggling to gain market share. But that could be about to change. Blackberry's BB10 is now here and Nokia's Windows Phone is showing promising sales. What's really interesting is we're seeing the emergence of viable new operating systems such as Firefox, Ubuntu and Sailfish and these offer an alternative to what's currently out there. So what are the big opportunities in this space? We track down three industry experts for their point of view. In terms of the number of players in the smartphone market, it's incredibly dynamic. You've got a, you've got a huge amount of activity. Everyone's coming to mobile for obvious reasons. But you know, the, the big, big challenge for the vast majority of players is, is profitability. And the lion's share of the profit is being extracted by essentially two manufacturers. The, the big thing is that as much as we see Samsung and Apple and Google being very, very dominant now, I, that's not necessarily going to remain the case indefinitely. The Internet of the 90s had a problem that it was a monopoly. The only way to get online was with Internet Explorer on a Windows machine, which meant you had to buy a Windows computer and install Windows and actually go there. And it was not a good experience, it was not a free experience and it was not a creative experience. So when Firefox came around and we opened up the Internet to standards, then out of a sudden people had a choice. I did not have to buy a Windows machine to go online, I could use anything. What's very interesting about this market is that it's no longer a market purely around around a, a, a number of manufacturers. This is a market that's being heavily disrupted by the big web brands. It's the Googles, the Microsofts, the Facebooks. It's these big platform companies which are coming in and disrupting the market that we saw you know, five, six years ago, which was heavily dominated by, by one player in Nokia. The winners and losers in the handset market are generally going to be people who don't understand where the trend is, who mi misinterpret the exponential growth in the market, which is very normal in business actually. People normally do underestimate the, the speed of change. Uh, so anybody who isn't going to innovate and keep up is going to be a big loser. In the future, I think there's a place for both open and closed standards. There's very exciting things happening in open standards, Android being a great example, or, or Firefox, Mozilla, um, and um, great success there. But as Apple has proved, there's certainly a case for Close as well. Close makes it simpler for the users. You can control the experience, and some people like that. But in terms of overall volume, open always wins. The great opportunity of open standards in mobile is the same that we had on the desktop. That instead of writing code for every platform, instead of having one game for every platform, you write the code once and it runs everywhere. 10 million people out there build things for the web right now. 10 million people should be allowed to build on all the new cool hardware coming out. For the end consumer, HTML5 means that they can take their apps with them wherever they go. If you lose your mobile phone or if, it, if you wipe it, if you have to delete it, all the, all the apps are still there and the apps can sync across different devices as well. So if I've got an Android tablet and an iOS phone, I can keep the score of my game on both of them with HTML5. There's a lot of new platforms coming out in 2013. We're seeing Tizen, Firefox OS, BB10, yeah, the, the list goes on. Um, so I think that there's going to be some careful analysis of the alternatives. Um, the big question of course is how many of those platforms can sustain a long-term position because it's probably only a couple. Thank you.